Welcome to the mid-2000s. Computers that shed their boring beige aesthetic. This was after all a new millennium and they now look modern, sleek, sophisticated. Or at least that's what the marketing crud I believe when I bought this back in the day. It's so classy. This is my original Shuttle X system which is in need of a bit of a TLC. Let's walk through the system as we give it a clean up and explore it together. Welcome back to Rick's Random Retro, where things are just shiny. The Shuttle Computer Group has always pushed a small forward factor, often using our own unique designs on many other models. When I started shopping for a new computer around 2003, this immediately caught my eye. My computer at the time was a large tower, though it was uh, noisy to say the least, and the marketing material for the Shuttle Model X looked like it was comfortable on the desk, basically whisper quiet. Spoiler alert, it's not even close. The particular model I ended up with and we still have here today is an XPC SN41G2, featuring a socket A motherboard supporting an AMD processor of the Athlon or XP family. Windows XP is indeed the operating system here to give you an idea what this machine will do, more on that a bit later. It has many integrated features and you can tell they really were trying to sell this as an all-in-one solution equally at home on your desk or integrated into your home theater system. You can see it straight up on their website which actually still has an official page for this model with tons of information plus drivers to download. I do always enjoy and applaud when companies do this with their legacy products. Thanks a lot Shuttle. The product page reads, The XPC SN41G2 is designed to be the centerpiece of your digital life. Digital hub, music, photos and video, desktop replacement, home gaming center, home office productivity. Yes, the new generation of do-it-all computer had arrived. I'll leave a link in the description if you like reading through old stuff like this. It's quite detailed and fun to actually sift through. Back to the shuttle at hand, if we take a look at the ports, we have a myriad of audio related options on the front, including an SPDIF or optical audio outport, really hammering across the media chops on display here. Around the back, the port party continues with just about everything you could need. I needed more though, but first let's take this thing apart and go through it as we progress. Taking a look at the case, it actually comes apart quite easily. It uses just these thumb screws that you undo on the back here. And yes, I know I'm missing one, but we have two out of three, so that's pretty good. Once those are out, the top case actually just slides out, and it's one piece of aluminum, so you kind of have to flex a little bit to get it off, but no problem there. Once we open it up now, we can really see how tight things are. I mean, it's it's crammed in here, uh, which is where their uh, patented heat pipe technology comes into play. So it uses actual active cooling in here. The power supply I replaced with a more powerful one. We'll get more to that later. It was spinning around here. We can see that, again, it's very, very cramped. The drive bay and the video card and everything makes it almost impossible to see into the machine itself. So we're going to take it apart so you can actually see better in there, but... You can tell, you can see through, but it's it's very, very tight. Then having undone the screws for the drive bay and detached the first IDEA cable, you kind of have to wedge it around a little bit here, and you have to get your fingers in to actually detach all the cables holding drive cage together, including the power and IDEA cables for the hard drive and CD-ROM drive, and a floppy drive should you have that installed, which we don't have here. And then it just kind of pops out here, final cable. There we go. Now it just kind of pops out. You can see the whole drive bay giving us access to the interior of the machine and we'll put that aside. With that drive bay removed we can actually get a better look at the internals. Take a look here and it's a little hard to see with the lighting but it should be alright. We can lift the IDE cable which actually has a nice little pull tab here to make a decent remove. You can see that there is no fan on the actual CPU itself. It actually has an enclosed water heat pipe system. The water goes up into those little pipes and then vent it out which makes it a very clever solution for such a tight space. The next task is to actually remove the video card as well which again with such a small chassis it's of course cramped. So first off we have to disconnect all these power connectors that I have. Uh, this is for a fan controller I believe. And here's the actual power of the video card. And it is an AGP slot, so it comes out with a little clip here. And you still have to kind of fiddle around to get it out. Now, as far as the actual card, this is a Radeon 9700 Pro. And we'll put it through spaces later. I'm going to speed things up a little bit here, but the next thing we need to do is take some of the cabling out to make some more room. I will note that the cable writing is actually pretty clever and smart here. You can see that they really work pretty well with the small space they had available. 
We'll also need to take the memory sticks out. In this case, we have 512 plus 256 here, giving us 768 meg of RAM. We may install some other modules here at the end of this, but that's what we're taking out right now. To really take this thing apart, we also have to take the front off, and it's actually a one single aluminum piece, so we have to undo these like kind of decorative screws here first to actually release the panel. These screws are not that great or easy to undo, but they do come out eventually, so we kind of tell here, and here comes a whole aluminum piece, one piece, which kind of gives you that high quality feel to it. That of course leaves with the plastic front, which comes off quite easily. Give it a good clean here, but the uh, buttons could use a little uh, greasing up if you will, they're not that great to use right now. Now remember when I said I needed more ports than this machine actually offered. You see this parallel port or printer port? That was not included. I actually added that as an accessory and it actually just kind of attaches here with just those little screw holes here. And that's all holding on to the chassis. So you undo these two and it pops right out. So again, this was not standard equipment, but I wanted a printer port. Dang it. So I bought that extra. And it's just a little cable dongle attaches to a bus on the motherboard. So that's pretty much it. And next we're going to start taking apart the fan assembly here. And it actually just uses these regular thumb screws to be undone here. And that's actually mostly holding the fan. We'll show it in a second here when it goes to the other side. But I'm going to do these screws and that will pop loose the actual metal shroud. If I can't kick the camera over, it actually holds onto the shroud. You can see it's almost coming apart now. So we turn around here. We'll see that the whole assembly now is sort of loose. And it slides right off those little heat pipes. There's a heat venting system here. So you can see I've upgraded this fan with the newer one. Uh, the original was pretty noisy, but... That's actually the whole fan assembly. That's the only thing to cooling off the processor. So we've arrived at what's arguably the most interesting part about this whole thing here. Again, that kind of heat pipe system that is enclosed and just has water in it to cool off the processor, which is then vented out by the fan on the case. It's actually just attached to these kind of spring screws that uh, detach here and it's keeping the pressure on the processor, which kind of acts as your normal thermopad under here, as we'll see in a second. Kind of have to undo these. They are tight from years of not being undone. But it should pop up fairly easily here. But again, it shows you how tight it is because it's getting snagged in all the cables and wiring and everything. So we just kind of extract this here carefully. And there is our Athlon processor finally exposed with some very old cooling paste. Actually, let's take a little closer look at this heat pipe, or as they call the ICE, or ICE, Integrated Cooling Engine. It's just kind of a self-enclosed water or heating system, so the bottom pad that actually attaches CPU heats the water, which then goes up in this little radiator, which then vented out. Just gotta remember, this is like in 2003, or probably designed in 2002, 2001. I just thought it was really cool, really compact design, and works really well. The next task we have is to remove the power supply. I've sped this up a little bit because there's a lot of screws and a little fiddly stuff to take care of here, so we're just going to fly through this. Anyway, this power supply is actually the upgraded one that's 250 watts versus the 200 watt that came with this machine. There was a revision 2 of this particular model that had that same 250 watt power supply. As far as I know, that's really the major difference in that version. There's no other real improvements that I'm aware of. Um, so this one has... I bought this one just to get a little more overhead so I can actually have a more powerful video card. Uh, a little more extra uh, power overhead and above all it was supposed to be quieter which it was a little bit it's still a tiny fan though so it, it actually is pretty high pitched but it did improve both acoustics and uh, power uh, delivery and everything so it was a worthwhile upgrade but again proprietary so we now have everything removed well basically everything and the first thing that strikes me picking up is how just ridiculously light this thing is. It weighs almost nothing now. I guess all the heavy components are in fact out. And we're left with just basically the motherboard, the CPU, and a few extra cables and wiring. So we're just going to kind of zoom around, take a look at this machine real quick, and then we're going to go to the next step. Spreading the components out like this, it's fun to see how much actually was jammed into this tiny case. 
That said, I went ahead and gave the parts as well as the case itself a good clean so it's ready for assembly. Sit back, relax, and watch me fumble this thing back together. We now have the shuttle put back together ready for an operating system. 
That said, what good is a retro computer without some period correct accessories? Matching silver definitely is a good look here. Though, ignore the blatantly beige CD-ROM drive. Uh, and while Shuttle did offer a matching silver one, I never did get that, so we're just gonna have to make do with this beige one. So I dug around in some old photo folders, and when you know it, I actually found some photos from back when I was using this computer in 2003 or 2004, at least if you look at the uh, date stamp on the files. Um, no making fun of my messy desk. I was in college, and you know, that's just how it looked. So compared to the very zen lady in this uh, shuttle promotional picture, yeah, it wasn't even close. So some of the type of games I was playing during this time were a lot of MMOs. So you had games like uh, Dark Ages of Camelot, Planet Side, and Horizon. This one was pretty short lived, but. Point being, it did actually act as an all in one machine for me, despite its small size. And I used it not just for gaming, obviously, uh, then also schoolwork, uh, and I actually used it for emulation. I was emulating N64 and PS1 at the time, and since it had a handy S Video out port on the back, I could connect it to my TV and play on there, actually. So it worked out really well. Um, it just, even though it was a small machine, and remember, for its time, today you can get many small four factor machines that are very powerful, but back in the day, I didn't feel there were many options for this small of a machine that had that power. So I never felt it was compromised due to its small size. And one thing we haven't fully laid out yet are the actual specs. With the machine ready to roll, we have a socket A motherboard holding an AMD Athlon XP2600 Plus processor. It has an integrated NVIDIA N Force 2 chipset, and I did upgrade the memory to 1GB using two 512MB sticks. For sound card, we'll stick with the integrated Realtek audio setup, uh, however we do have room for something beefier, like a Sound Blaster Audigy or something similar, should we go that route later. The hard drive is a Samsung 250GB parallel one. And let's not forget our Radeon 9700 Pro video card. This is not the original card I had in this machine back in the day, but I honestly can't recall what I did have. I did find documentation, again thanks Shuttle, showing this particular model was tested up to a Radeon 9800 Pro, which was a very powerful card for today. So while I get this machine loaded up with an operating system, and the choice here falls to Windows XP Media Center Edition, let's cut this one off here. Join me again in the next video where we'll take a look at some of those media chops, plus of course play some games. Thanks again for watching, and see you next time.